This thing's cool. <laughs> I've never gotten to use one of these, man. I always gotta like carry this mic around. I get to use this fancy headset thing. This is awesome. I like this thing. I can be all authoritative. <laughs> I like this thing. How are you guys doing? Good. That sucks. How are you guys doing? Thank you. See, I like him. He's starting to adopt. <laughs> I've never done that before in my life. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray real quick. I'm gonna go to the Lord really quick before I impart my knowledge upon you. What little I have. Uh, dear Daddy, uh, what's going on? Uh, this is Cameron. I'm just coming to you. I'm asking you to, to please speak through me. Uh, speak through through me to these 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 young adults and. Let's have some fun. I want, I, want, I want them to laugh and I want them to be inspired and I just want them to have a good time. So Lord, I just pray that you take your words and you put them into my mouth and you use me as a conduit uh, to speak, speak to these people. And uh, Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Uh, how much walking space do I have before I fall off a cliff? Uh, eight feet, six yeah. feet, eight feet. I'm a really animated speaker. I like to move. <laughs> anyway, my name is Cameron. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself first. I'm going to try not to drone on too long, because I know we got to be out of here at 9, because you guys got bedtime and stuff. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, I, my, name, my name is Small, and um, I'm studying. I have a I'm looking to get a degree in communications. I'm getting close. Uh, by the end of this year, I should have my associate's degree, and then I'm going to pursue my bachelor's. Uh, I'm working on getting a degree in communications. I would really like to do this for a living. This is what I want to do. I want to speak to people uh, for a living. This is where I feel comfortable, is on stage in front of people. Um, I, I am blind, and I want you guys to know I'm totally cool about it. I really am. So if, if you're going to give me like some naughty hand gestures, now's a good time. I'm not going to see it, and I don't care. And if you want to throw something, just aim for the chest area. Um, don't, no face shots. It's not cool. Anyway, so I'm, what I'm trying to establish is that I'm cool. I'm cool with this. I'm going to open the floor later for questions. And I want questions. I want juicy questions. Don't beat around the bush with me, okay? I want some juicy, good questions about, about being blind or my life or whatever. You guys aren't going to offend me. You're not going to upset me. I'm, I'm really easy going. I've been blind my whole life. And my father was always a close believer of tough love. And he's been making fun of me since the day I was born. I'm really used to it. My friends, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story about I'll illustrate my friends real quick. And illustrate one of my, one of my first points. Is, is I'm trying, I want to talk to you guys about confidence tonight. Talk to you guys about confidence. Talk to you about finding yourself and being comfortable with yourself. What, what is the... Uh, the age group in here. What are you guys like? Six through twelve? Is that right? Six through twelve. All right. Awesome. Awesome. You guys like? I not and I, I I like talking to you guys because I'm not that much older than you guys. I was in high school like three years ago. I remember it very well. I didn't. I, it would not not the best. I didn't care much for it. Honestly, I like college. College is cool. College is awesome. Um, but I'm, I'm not that much older than you guys. I'm not some old man up here talking to you when back in my day. It's not, I'm, I'm not, I graduated. Does anyone here go to Camdenton? Yeah. Woo! 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 That's yeah. right, man. Purple and gold. They go. I walked across the stage in a purple gown. Yeah. When, you're, when you're a man, you gotta be really comfortable with yourself to walk across stage in a purple gown. <laughs> It don't bother me. Anyway, I'm, I, I was a Laker. I was a Laker. I was in theater. Uh, Joe Beth Nicholas is a very close friend of mine. I love Joe Beth. I did Robin Hood. Uh, I was. Anyone see Robin Hood? I was. I was. I used to have really, really long blonde hair. Maybe you'd recognize me better if I still had that. But when I in Robin Hood, I was the sheriff of Nottingham. And then I was in West Side Story and Pride and Prejudice and Peter Pan. I love Peter, and Miss Nicholas and I were very close. She's a, does anyone have her? I do. I do. She I is a phenomenal, tell her that Cameron Black spoke for your church. She is a phenomenal woman. I love her today. She's a dear person. 
Anyway, but guys, I know, I know it's rough. I know in middle school and in high school, it's, it's rough. It is, it's rough. Especially if you're weird, and I'm really weird. Me <laughs> too. And it's like, and I'll tell you this story. Here's about having confidence. The first thing about having confidence, I'm going to try to give you guys some steps to having confidence. Being comfortable with you. Being comfortable with just the way God made you. Sometimes you are going to look like a complete fool. And that is hilarious. And I will tell you this story. I will tell you this story. This is very recent. I live with my best friend. His name is, is Artie. I, or Arthur. Or Artemis Prime is what I call him. <laughs> and uh, he's a good friend of mine. Um, how we met is a very long and convoluted story, and it's probably for another time. It's a, it's a funny one. And one day, I was in high V buying flowers for a lovely young lady who's here tonight with me. And uh, we were, my friend already, he had bought a shirt. And on this shirt, it was a bright yellow shirt. You've probably even seen it. And it said, it said, warning. My awesomeness may cause blindness, or something like that. I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> and he's wearing this shirt, and he's making me be his example. And, <laughs> and we go walking out. We, he's, like, he's like, you just wait, man. People, we're going to walk in the store, and people are going to make jokes. Not a single person made a joke. Either they didn't get it, or they were like, oh, that's sad. <laughs> All right, they have to make fun of that young blind man. <laughs> Anyway, we're walking out the store, and I'm giving him, you know, I'm giving him some mess. I'm like, man, no one said anything. This is a complete waste of time. He said, well, you just don't act blind enough. That's your problem. <laughs> and I said, I don't act blind because I'm not blind. I'm not blind at all. That's ridiculous. And at that very moment, I plowed face first into a handicap sign. <laughs> and it really hurt. <laughs> My friend, just, he might have helped me if he hadn't been laughing so hard. <laughs> and, that, and, that's, and you know what? I love that. I love that. I do. I don't like it when people tiptoe around me and feel sorry for me. I love being who I am. Being blind is awesome. It rocks. And man, here's the thing. Here's what I want to talk to you guys about. Everybody's got a challenge. Maybe mine is a little more obvious. You know, maybe you can see mine just by looking at it, but everybody's got a challenge. If there's a person in this room and you don't think you're handicapped in some way, I believe the door is over there. You don't need to be here. If you are not handicapped in any sort of way, then you are way too good to be in here with the rest of us. Come on, right now, someone who, who, who has a handicap. It doesn't have to be physical. It doesn't have to be blindness or something, but come on, someone brave. I have one. What? You do? See? Are you cool with that? That's what I'm talking about. That's, what, what do you got back there? ADD? That's a really popular problem. <laughs> what? Sam? Sam, what do you got? It's okay. I got the opposite of that problem. I'm skinny as a pole. Love you, Sam! Well, we're going to open the floor for questions at, at the end. You guys ask whatever you want. Man, every, everyone in here has, has, has a problem, and, it, and it, it's rough. I bet you guys get teased, and you get made fun of. And it's especially rough in middle school and high school. It's, it's rough for guys and girls in different ways, because guys, guys have to be masculine, and we have to be tough, and we have to be athletes, and we have to be manly. <laughs> <laughs> And not all us guys are fit to do that. Look at me. Do I look like a football player to you? No. You're a liar. You're blinder than me. I wasn't athletic, you guys. I wasn't athletic. I mean, aside from the skateboarding thing, and most folks don't even count that as a real sport, which is crap, but that's another soapbox I'm not going to get on. Um, but I wasn't, you guys. I wasn't popular in school. I was super shy. I was. I know you can't imagine that, but 15-year-old me, there's no way I'd be up here doing this. No way. I was way too shy because I was way too concerned because people were always making fun of me and always giving me problems about not being blind. And I wasn't athletic, you know, I wasn't, I'm not a very big guy. 
It's like I'm 24. This is I'm probably done growing. I weigh like 130 pounds soaking wet. And, and uh, you know, I was I was blind. I'm deaf. I was definitely not girl popular. Like I was that little pathetic kid in the corner who got a crush on everybody and nobody cared. <laughs> that, that was me. Zach, <laughs> whatever. And I and and it was rough, you guys. It was. It's hard. I understand. I understand, I, I've been there, and it wasn't even that long ago that I was there. I'm only a few years older than you guys. And I understand, going through high school, there's just a lot of pressure. You know, like I was saying, the guys gotta be masculine, gotta be tough, and be manly. And some guys aren't like that. And some guys just wanna sit and read a book and drink some tea. That's me. That's me, I sit with a book and drink some tea. I'd, I'd, I'd sit in the bathtub and read a book if I didn't have those huge braille books. No, I can't do that. But I am. I'm kind of a girly guy. So what? But and then girls have it hard too. You do because you have all those stupid magazines and stupid movies and those stupid singers who look really pretty, and you have to live up to that. And that's crap. And you should have to live up to that. You should be happy with you. You should be happy being beautiful because you think you're beautiful. Men, you should be happy being who you are. Because that, that's just the way God made you. And, and I know sometimes you're like, God, now why, what'd you do this for? But he has, he has a reason. He has a hand-picked purpose for each and every one of you. I promise. I promise. And there, there are times. I know you guys, I bet everyone in this room has prayed this prayer. I bet everybody in this room has prayed this prayer. It's like, God, please, you, you know, like you're in a situation. You don't want to be in it. It's bad news. You know you're going to have to do something when you don't want to do it. And you're like, God, please, is there some way around this? Can we please not do this? Not today, God. Just not today. And, and uh, you shouldn't feel bad about praying that. Because there is another man who has prayed that same prayer. And his name is Jesus Christ. The night before Jesus was crucified, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he was with the disciples, and he was praying. And he was praying, he was saying this prayer, and I'm not quoting verbatim, but this is pretty much what he was saying. It's like, God, let this cup pass from me. Which, to put that in simpler terms, he was saying, God, I do not want to do this. I do not want to be betrayed. I don't want to get nailed to a two-by-four. None of this sounds like fun to me. I don't want to do this. Is there, you know, I have never sinned, God. I have never cheated. I have never lied. I have never stolen. I have never sinned. I have never done anything bad. Why are you making me do this? And God, is, is there any way out of this? God, anything? And God, no. No, there's not. And so he goes over to the disciples. He's like, hey, all y'all, wake up right now. Wake up. You're all going to help me pray. We're going to pray. We're going to talk to God. So I don't have to do this tomorrow. We, so get up and help me pray, because they were all asleep. He's like, come on, we're going to pray, and you guys can help me. So he gets down on his knees with the disciples. He said, God, please, please, God, I don't want to do this. There's got to be a way around this. There has to be a way to avoid this. Is there anything, God, is there anything that I can do to avoid what, what has to happen to me? I said, no. There's not. There's nothing you can do. And that, at first, on the surface, that sounds discouraging. But it's not. And the reason it's not is because every person in here has faced, is facing, or will face a huge challenge. It will be different for every one of you. It could be ADHD. It could be weight problems. It could be shyness. It could be blindness. It could be problems with family, it could be problems at school, there is an infinite number of things it could be. But you guys, you should take heart in the fact that God has hand-selected and hand-picked you to fight that battle. Because he does not think that anybody else can do that job. You, whoever I'm pointing at, what is your name? Julie. Julie. I'm pointing at Julie? Mm -hmm. Okay, Julie, you know why you're Julie? Because nobody else can do it. Nobody else is fit to be Julie. You. Jessica. Jessica. Julie's sister. Oh, that's a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs>
Jessica, you're Jessica because no one else can be you. Jessica, I'm Cameron because no one can be Cameron Black at all. Not like I can. And God knows that. God knows that. And it's, it's tough. It's tough. It is hard. And I know you guys are in that world. There's popularity. There's dating. There's boys. There's girls. There's teachers. There's all sorts of that. You'll be happy to know that uh, college, a lot of that stuff kind of goes away. For those of you that aren't enjoying it, it won't last. <laughs> and honestly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you guys a hard truth. I'm not trying to start any fights. I really don't want to get beat up. I'm not a very big guy. <laughs> I want to tell you the truth, though. Please don't get mad at me. Don't take this personally. I mean no offense. High school is not that important. It's not. I'm sure there are some of you in here, I'm not going to pick on you, but I'm sure there are some of you in here who think there is nothing more important than what's going on in high school right now. And it's just not true. I tell you what, ever since I graduated, pretty much nothing that I did in high school has affected me now. I, I graduated, I think I still talk to one person. I have one friend who is still my close friend that I graduated with. I'm not saying you shouldn't enjoy high school. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that high school is terrible and you should just you should just wait till it's over. I'm not saying that. If you're having fun in high school, then by all means, have fun. But don't take it too seriously. Don't take the things that happen too personally. It's very, very young in your life. High school, middle school, same difference. It's very early in your life. And you can move on to bigger and better things. But for now, just remember that God has hand-picked you to do something incredible. And I'm going to tell you, for those of you that have challenges, which is all of you, here's my advice for that, for overcoming that challenge. Because now you're sitting back there and you're like, well, see, if you say, Cameron, you're sitting up there on your stage and you, you have over, oh, overcome your challenge, but I'm sitting out here and I haven't overcome it yet. <laughs> and I, I get that. I know. I get that. And I get Because I was in high school and I used to watch a public speaker. I'm like, man, this guy's got his life all figured out. That's why it's so easy for him. I, get, I understand. I understand. Here's my advice. You can take it or leave it. Your challenge, whatever that be, is not going anywhere. You can help it. You can do things to make it easier. But you are probably going to live with it the rest of your days. So you might as well be happy about it. You guys, there is a cure for my blindness. It came out when I was 17. It is not a definite cure, but it was definitely a possibility. My father approached me about it and he, when I was 17 years old, and he said that my mother and him would pay for the operation if it meant that I could restore any of my sight, any of my sight at all. And I immediately said, no. And he said, you don't want to pray about it? And I said, I don't feel like I need to. I feel like God is speaking to me very clearly right now. I don't want to see. No offense to those of you who can. There's all of you. Yeah. I'm sure seeing's great. But to be honest, the idea of being able to see scares me to death. I don't know how to function with my eyes. Not like you guys do. I walk with my memory in my ears. I skateboard with my memory in my ears. And I do everything with my other senses. And if I woke up tomorrow and I could see, I'd be terrified. I would. Because... I, I don't know how to walk and look where I'm walking. I don't know how to, I've never had to do that before. I don't know how to read, you guys. I'm 24 years old. I can't read. I, I know what letters look like, and I know that stuff, but I, I can't read. I'm a Braille reader. I read Braille, and I write Braille. And uh, my Actually, I don't even have two eyes. This eye is a prosthetic. It's a glass eye. I could take it out. If you start talking, take it out and throw it at you. <laughs> but you guys, the idea of seeing scares me because I just don't feel like it's what God wants. I'd get up, I'd get up, and I wouldn't know my world. I'd get up, and I wouldn't know what to do. And then I would see the beautiful face of my girlfriend. I wouldn't even know who I'm looking at. And that thought scares the crap out of me. I, I'm happy being me. So the advice I have to give you about being happy with you, aside from you know, get over it, is <laughs> you guys, everyone has challenges. Here's what you're going to do with them. I don't want anyone in this room to have the mentality of, well, I have this challenge, so what am I allowed to do? What can I do? You know, I'm, I have this challenge, so I can't do this. That's not a good mentality. 
I want you to think to yourself, I want to do this. I'll use myself as an example. I want to skateboard. I, when I was 12, I wanted to skateboard, but I was blind. So I was like, okay, how am I going to find a way around this? You do not mold your life to your challenges. You mold your challenges to your life. And you guys, I'm Cameron Black, and I am blind, and I could not be prouder of it. And I want, I want some strong, brave people to stand up and tell me who you are, tell me what you are, and tell me how proud of it you are. And if you don't stand up, I'm going to pick people. <laughs> stand up, stand up. No, what is wrong? I'm Zach Arlen, and I'm a musician. And? I love music. That's what I'm talking about. Woo! Love that. Okay. I'm Jill, and uh, I love music. What are you, Jill? Um, you whatever you want. I'm really short and I have mixed hair and I don't know what color it is. But you're proud of it, right? Yeah! Yeah, you Woo! are! Uh, I'm a freaking weirdo! Woo! Yeah, you are! Who else? <laughs> My mom and I play sports. And you're proud of it. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Ah, yeah, yeah. You guys, I tend to ramble. I'm trying to stop myself. <laughs> What I want to do now, before you clap, and I appreciate that, uh, I've pretty much delivered my message. I do have other funny stories. Maybe, maybe uh, we might have time for them here in a few minutes. But before people start having to leave, and I'm going to stick around. I'll stick around for a while to answer other questions or tell funny stories. When you're blind and you've got a fake eye, there's no shortage of funny stories. There's a lot. I lost my eye down a sink drain. Okay, now I've got to tell. All right. Real quick. Real quick. Then question time. Question time, but before this, all right. So all you people who are really concerned with how you look, ladies, I'm talking to you, who are really concerned with how you look at school with your makeup and your face and your clothes. <laughs> when I was my first night before sixth grade, it's the night before sixth grade. It is a huge moment in a young man slash woman's life. Night before middle school, I'm washing my face, I'm brushing my teeth, I'm going to look good tomorrow. I'm going to look good my first day of middle school. I take my eye out to wash it, I lose my grip, and my eye goes down the drain. <laughs> and I run up to my dad, who's watching football, I like, Daddy! Dad, I was crying like a baby. Daddy, quit watching your football. He's like, Cameron... What is wrong with you? <laughs> like, Dad, I lost my eye down the sink, Dad. <laughs> my dad stops his football game. My dad's big college football. And don't step in the middle of my dad's football game. That's treason. And this was not a good time for his blind son to lose his eye down the drain. <laughs> but he's a good father, so he comes down and gets his tool chest and opens the sink and is unscrewing the pipes and I'm sitting on my mom's lap, this big 13-year-old sixth grader going, ah! <laughs> and my dad fishes my eye out and everything was cool. But so, you know, tomorrow when all you girls are worrying about, you know, what makeup, what clothes you're gonna wear, I almost went to my first day of sixth grade without an eye in my head. So I don't even want to hear it. All right, now, um, I don't raise your hand. If you raise your hand, I'm not going to pick you. Just stand up don't, and, and ask me some questions. This is my favorite part of speeches. I love interacting with my audience because I'm here for you guys. So come on. I, I want it. Let's hear some. What's your favorite color? Don't know. <laughs> well, my mic's turning off. You like blue. I do like blue. I'm <laughs> green. God has always been in my life. Now, I'll I, I tell you the truth about God. I was born in a Christian home. I was raised in a Christian home. But I did not always know what God was about. I mean, you went to church because it was a chore. You had to do it. Your parents said, you're going to church. But you have to. And I didn't totally get it. I always believed in God. But I didn't totally get the, whole, the real relationship with God. And it wasn't until I was about 15 or 16 that I really started to come to grips with my blindness and was really starting to come to grips with it. This is how God made me. This is how He wants me to be. And that was really the beginning of my close personal relationship with God. That's a fantastic question. What's your favorite book? 
Oh man, that's tough. I absolutely love to read. I love to read. I love classic books. Uh, I love I love old books that have been around for like a hundred years. Um, I was talking to my friend today about The Count of Monte Cristo. That is a terrific, awesome book. I love Sherlock Holmes stories. Um, I, I, I love classic literature. It's hard to pick a favorite. I'm a huge dork. I love Lord of the Rings. I'm, I went to the midnight showings. I am such a loser. <laughs> I love Star Wars. You know what else I love? You guys make fun of me all you want. I don't care. I love the original Star Trek. Captain James T. Kirk. That's right. I like Star Wars. Yeah. Next question. What do I drink? Dream? Oh, okay. I thought you asked what I drink. I'm like, is this an AA meeting? I mean, I dream the same thing you guys dream, and I get, I get that question a lot. I get the question a lot, what do you see when you dream? That's a really good question. It really is. And the answer, I'm afraid, is not nearly as exciting as the question, which is that I see pretty much in my dreams what I see in real life, which is uh, shadows and light and things like that. But what I do have in my dreams, I don't know if other people have this, I can, I can like sense things in my dreams. Almost. It's not quite my other senses, like I can't smell things or feel things, but I can kind of sense them. It's hard to explain. It doesn't make much sense, I know. That's really the best way I can put it. Uh, Any, come on. Come on, man. What's your favorite food? My favorite food? I love spicy stuff, so I'd have to say, if I were to pick a food genre, it'd probably be Mexican, because they got salsa and it's spicy, and I love that. How did you act? I, my first play was Robin Hood. I watched that. You did? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah, I watched you in it. You watched me in it? Did I suck? No. Hey, good. <laughs> Do you play an instrument? Do I play an instrument? No. I, I don't. I, I tell you what, I, I love the guitar. I love to listen to the guitar. I love the guitar. I'm a big, you guys are going to think that I'm old. I don't like you guys' music. I like rock and roll. Like, yeah! I'm sorry, but if you, if you guys like Justin Bieber and Katy Perry, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I like Justin Bieber. You and me are going to have a talk later. I hate Justin Bieber. I love my favorite band is probably the Beatles and Led Zeppelin and Aerosmith. I don't play an instrument. I, I love the guitar, but I'm, I'm just not, I'm not musically inclined. I'm not patient enough for it. But I have a deep respect for anyone who plays an instrument because it's hard. It's it. What's up? How did you meet your fiance? I met her because we went to, uh, I had a friend, and he was going to this basketball game. He played basketball. And I, I was, he was like, you want to go? And I'm like, no, I don't want to go watch basketball. That's totally boring for me. But I was house-sitting for my parents, so I really didn't have a whole lot else to do. So he was like, come on, just, just go. I'm like, okay, I'll go. So I went, and he's out, like, socializing and playing and stuff, and I'm, like, sitting there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she was sitting there, like, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> And we just kind of, we struck up a conversation. And we had a whole lot in common. And uh, she invited me to her house for New Year's. And I asked her father's permission if I could date her. And then I asked her permission, and she said yes. Was there, was there ever, have you ever been mad at God through life? Yes. Definitely. I did. I was going to say something earlier, and I will answer this question. Um, we are not formally engaged yet, but it's, it's going to happen. <laughs> but to answer that other question, yes, I have. I have a mad at God, and I'm sure everybody in here is a mad at God. And I, I have. I think when I was about 12, that's when my anger really hit home, because I was very close to my grandfather, and he passed away. And. Uh, I was like, man, you know, I'm blind, I get picked on, I get made fun of, 
And now, like, one of the only people that I really trust in my life is gone. And I was, I was very angry at God. And that just goes back to what I was saying earlier, that some things you guys have to deal with are going to be rough. But the Lord has handpicked you to deal with them. And that's kind of what I had to realize when I was angry with God. What do you think people would look like? Oh. I mean, I'm, that, no, that's, that's, that's a really good question. Like, not a clue. Maybe <laughs> got scales. <laughs> I mean, I think you're wearing, I think you're wearing shorts and pants. At least you better be. Or shirt and pants. You better. Be. But I don't know. It's like I, I know what people look like. I've heard them described. But I know that we were made in the image of God. So I guess we're all pretty good looking. I guess. I mean, <laughs> Yes, Ashley. I go to school with Ashley, by the way. She has to put up with my crap on a day-to-day -day basis. Do you guys have about Well, guys, it's very, 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 very common not to feel good about yourself. Girls have plenty of reasons why they don't feel good about themselves, and guys, we also have plenty of reasons why we don't feel good about ourselves. And, and, it's, and, it's, and it's rough. And I wish, you know, I really wish I could give you some kind of deep, profound statement that would make that easier to deal with. And I honestly, honestly cannot. All I can tell you is to reiterate what I've already said, which is that th this, this is who you are. And you are not going to change. The best thing you can do is find a way to be happy with you. And I promise you, I give you my word, that when you are happy with you and you enjoy being you, life is so much more fun. And you guys, you're going to get stared at. You guys, I cannot walk in public without getting looked at. I just can't. It's part of my day-to-day -day life. I can't go out to dinner. I can't go into Walmart without getting stared at. I just can't. It's... It's something I've had to get used to. And so you guys, I, I, have, I have bad news to break to you. You are going to get looked at. And you are going to get made fun of and people are not always going to like you no matter who you pretend to be. So my guess is, is that since people are, there are gonna be certain people that are always not gonna like you no matter how comfortable or uncomfortable you are, then you might as well just be comfortable. Yeah. Would be the best advice I can give you guys is just, just be happy, be happy with you. Because let me tell you this. Uh, some of you don't want to stick out. Some of you would like to just blend in and not be noticed at all. But as Christians, we are supposed to stick out. We are supposed to be noticed as Christians. And people are like, man, those guys are kind of weird. But you know what? You know what they're really thinking? They're thinking, man, those people are happy. They are happy and confident with who they are. And I don't know how they got like that. I think, I think that's how people think. And I know I get looked at. But I think whenever I do get stared at, people are like, man, that guy is really happy being blind and being who he is. I wonder how he got that way. So that's, that's the best advice I, I can think to give. I know it's not super profound. It's, it's the best I can think of. What, what kind of scriptures do you look for for encouragement when you're feeling down? I think one of my favorite scriptures for encouragement, and, it, and it's, it's tough, <laughs> is, is uh, once again, this, this, this is short, but I think it is profound. Whenever you're feeling down, whenever your life, you just feel like everything is collapsing around you. I don't even remember the name of the scripture, but I've had someone say it to me. And maybe, maybe one of you guys can figure out where it is. It's hard for me to access a Bible. A Braille Bible is about as big as its stage. So it, I don't always know the name, the number of scripture, what book it's in. But I know I'm quoting it right. It's very simple. Be still and know that he is God. And he's going to take care that's it. Be still and know that he is God. The verse that I use for my personal inspiration, I believe, is in John. And it's when Jesus and the disciples walk past this blind man, this blind beggar on the street, and his disciples say to him, Lord, why is this man blind? Is it because of his sins or because of the sins of his parents? 
And Jesus stops and he says, Neither. This man was made blind so that the glory of the Lord may shine through him. And that, it may have been about a blind person, but it applies to everyone. So those are really two that have always stuck out uh, to me. Hey, Cameron, thank you so much. Man, it's been my pleasure. You guys rock. Hey, let's give Cameron a Out. I'm going to hang around, and uh, if you didn't get a chance to talk to me or ask a question or, or whatever, or you want to punch me in the face because my speech sucked, then, we, then I'll be hanging around and you can do that. Um, but right now, let's, uh, let's go to Daddy in prayer. Uh, dear Daddy, um, I think that was good, and I hope that you liked it, and I hope that I honored you with it, and I hope that you used my words to speak to these kids. And I pray that you go with each and every one of them tonight as they go home and as they get ready for school the next day or whatever it is they're going off to do. And that you never, you never let them forget that you have hand-selected them to do what you have designed them to do and to, to, to confront the challenges that you have put for them. Don't ever let them forget to not mold their life around their challenges, but mold their challenges around their life. Thank you so much, Lord, for giving me the opportunity to do this. God bless every one of these kids. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.